I'm Charles Meriday, and I'm in the restaurant business. In my 20 years as a chef and restaurant owner, I've been able to work and eat in some of the great kitchens around the globe. There's a whole side of the restaurant that most people will never get to see. So now, I want to take you to the back of the house, into kitchens of some of the best chefs in the world. Along the way, I'll share some of my own tips and recipes, so you can cook like a pro too. So join me in the back of the house for a whole new perspective on cooking and food. Serve it, please. Bonavista. I'm glad that you came, but please. Back of the House is sponsored in part by. In this episode of Back of the House, Charles is taking us into the kitchens of his very own restaurants to meet the chefs behind the magic, learn about cutting edge cooking techniques, and see what it takes to be a world class cooking team creating art out of food in this edition of Back of the House. It's, uh, it takes it takes 100%. I mean, you can't you can't give 50% because then it comes out of the food. So we're at first four cereals, shrimp, mussels, shrimp, It's about 10 o'clock in the morning, we're here at Meriday's and I wanted to take the opportunity today to introduce you to my own restaurant family and show you a little bit about uh, what a day is like uh, for us here and uh, what makes our restaurant unique. And uh, one of the most unique things about Meriday's is the location. Uh, it's here are the shops at the Naples Bay Resort and it's just incredibly beautiful. It's surrounded by water on both sides with floor to ceiling glass and it's just an amazing place to work and cook and actually uh, to dine as well. Chelsea, Hi. how are you doing? How are you? All right, everybody, this is uh, Chelsea Phillips. Uh, she's a stage with us, and she's from South, South Africa. Africa. Now we're going to meet Dave. We yeah. call him D. Russ. Tell him what's up, D. Russ. What's up? <laughs> Tell him where you're from, who you are. Uh, I'm from Oregon. I'm Dave. I lived in the Virgin Islands. That's where I met Charles <laughs> and Joe. <laughs> and Joe. <laughs> Joe and Charles just worked them at Old Stone Farmhouse. Been cooking for about nine years now, and I uh, love these guys. So that's why I'm here. We love you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chef. All right, this is uh, Joe Pittman. He's the executive chef here at Meredith's. Um, you want to tell them about yourself, chef, and where you're from, and who you are, and what's yeah, going I'm, on? Yeah, uh, I'm Joe Pittman. I'm uh, from Mobile, Alabama. I'm executive chef here at Meredith's Fine Dining. Uh, Met Charles many years ago as a bartender in Mobile. And Imagine that. Been been on the ride ever since. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been fun. We you know we have a blast here. You know, getting ready for service tonight. Uh, getting ready to kill it. So. Maybe tell everybody a little bit about what you do here and what you know your responsibilities here at the restaurant. Um, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Only I mean, a couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean just daily operations. You know, mise en place. Um, you know, getting the menus together, you know, we change our menus just about every day. So just constantly, you know, brainstorming with Chef and some of the other chefs, um, just trying to come up with new, fresh ideas. And so yeah, it's, a, it's an experience. It's definitely busy days. <laughs> so what do we got? So this is our veal stock. I usually let it run two days um, to where I can get the consistency and the color I want to make our uh, our demi. So now this has been coming down for two days. It's kind of ready to, to make sauce with. So we'll reduce all this down. This is about, let's say about 10 to 15 gallons. So we'll reduce it down into about a gallon and a half of liquid, which will make our veal shoe. So it's some beautiful uh, baby squash here. It's just in the beginning of the summer. Um, we get most of these specialty products from the chef's garden which is in uh, Huron, Ohio. It's the world's most advanced uh, farm for vegetables and specialty farming. They have about 700 different varieties. And the cool thing about it is, as you can see, uh, they, they, pick, they farm and pick these things especially for us. We call, and then uh, from the time we call them, within 24 hours, uh, we get them packed and ready uh, to get to our customers. So it's really um, just a cornerstone of our cooking here in, in 
what what we do really in, in general. I mean, they're a huge part of it. All right, today we're going to prepare some uh, Japanese uh, Miyazaki beef. And this is uh, gonna be cooked uh, sous vide. And what that means is that it's uh, first vacuum sealed, and then we cook it in what's called a thermal immersion circulator. And the reason that we do that is because it raises the temperature of the beef um, really slightly and, and really gently. So when we go to uh, sear it, um, it just has a, a very nice texture and, and it's cooked perfectly on the interior. Um, so we keep the circulator at right around 125 degrees. And this has been in the circulator for about uh, 12 minutes. The most important thing about this beef uh, is the marbling and the fat content, the fat that's suspended uh, within the protein of the beef. And to really uh, maximize that, it's really important that you want to melt that fat you know, because that's the real benefit of it. You want the meat to um, not be cooked through to where it's well done, but to get warm enough to make the fat moist and for it to melt. Um, so I think that cooking it sous vide in, in the thermal circulator is definitely the best way to go about doing that. Um, because this ingredient is just so spectacular, we really want to showcase it with other things that really are equally as special in their own right. So. <clears throat> Only for a few weeks every year, these wild onions here called ramps, uh, they come out. Um, they're foraged, usually um, found close to a riverbed or someplace moist. And, and they're usually only out around two to three weeks a year. So they're really prized uh, when they come out. And we're serving with the ramps as well as a pink blush asparagus from Farmer Lee Jones and the Chef's Garden. Uh, again, a very short season for this every year, only about three to four weeks. Uh, and they're just really spectacular. They're without a doubt the best asparagus I've ever seen. Um, these have been blanched and shocked and are ready to be sauteed along with the, the ramps. And we're gonna be serving that with the little uh, fresh truffles. These are summer truffles, summer black truffles. And these are from Five Diamond Delicacies. With this beef, it's very rich and very fatty, and, and that's what makes the great flavor. But we want to serve it with something contrasting. We're going to use a very light veal jus that we're going to finish with some fresh lemon, just give it a little bit of acidity and cut through the fattiness of the beef. We're going to cut the sous vide bag, and you can see it's just uh, beautiful, it's nice and, and soft, and it's like the most perfect medium rare. Yeah, you can really imagine. So we're gonna bring it out. We're gonna salt and pepper. I like to use a little kosher salt, a little black pepper. We roast the peppercorns first before, beforehand to kind of bring them back to life a little bit after being in the jar for so long. Um, hot pan, extra virgin olive oil. Right here. Just wanna get a nice sear on both sides. We don't really want to cook it because it's actually already cooked in the sous vide. So really just want to sear the uh, seasoning on the outside of it as well as create a nice texture um, or a nice crust and sear on there. You can see that, beautiful. It's exactly you know, what we're looking for. Next sear, we're gonna saute the remaining ingredients for the set. We start with a little bit of shallots, some butter. So this is a technique I like to use a lot. It's actually, we're using butter and olive oil together, um, both for the flavor of each one. Olive oil obviously has a higher smoking point. I'm gonna base that. Not that it really needs any more fat, but just like to add a little bit of, uh, of that flavor, even more luscious okay we're gonna add the ramps here first because those are still raw so we're just gonna let them saute you'll notice that the leaves will start to balloon up that's a classic trait these are really delicious they just you know they're full of flavor 
definitely uh, you know oniony, which pairs really nicely with beef. A little bit of salt. I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken stock here. Now you can see the the ramps are wilted down, and the asparagus we're just gonna warm up. These have already been blanched and shocked, shocked, which means uh, basically you drop them into boiling water. In particular, these are for about one minute. And then once we pull them out of the boiling water, submerge them into ice water really quickly to stop the cooking. Okay, so we have the ramps and the asparagus here. Some fresh lemon juice. Here we have our uh, veal jus. This is basically just a reduced veal stock. Um, we start with some very lightly roasted bones, uh, carrots, celery, onions, red wine. Um, we make a veal stock and then we reduce it uh, overnight just to kind of concentrate the flavor and texture. So we're just gonna add just a little bit of this to the setup. We don't want it to be like too heavy. And then we're gonna go to uh, present this, keep the presentation simple, all the flavors simple. Ramps there. You can see here the uh, result of the sous vide. It's just that perfect color texture. So this is the color that we're looking for on the sauce. We want it to be nice and light. We don't want it to be overpowering or in any way uh, dominate the flavor that we have here on the dish. Very light there. And we're going to finish it off with a little bit of uh, summer trouble. Summer troubles particularly like to be uh, fairly generous with them. They have a much milder flavor than the uh, black winter trouble or the white trouble. I uh, also finish that with a little bit of uh, truffle oil. Just a little bit of uh, fresh green garnish there. Uh, one rule of thumb, normally we like to wipe the plates, except when we're shaving truffles, we don't want to wipe away any of that goodness. So There you have it, Japanese Miyazaki beef with Chef's Garden, pink blush asparagus, ramps, and um, summer truffles. I'm Tiffany McQuaid of McQuaid & Company Real Estate Services. If you're buying or selling a home, let McQuaid & Company give you the comprehensive edge in achieving your residential and investment goals. From outstanding multimedia marketing programs to sell your property, to deep knowledge of the region's marketplace to find your new home, our highly experienced McQuaid & Company team will provide you with maximum results with a personal touch. We call it real estate to the nth degree. We now return to Back of the House with Charles Meriday. oven is, you know, our heart. We use it for everything. Uh, pizzas, finishing our fish in, finishing our chicken and beef, so you'll see it full here in a little bit. Water. Man, this kitchen function is like so smooth because everybody knows what we need to do. When we walk through these doors, we know it's crunch time, so you, you know what you got to do. You just get all your mise and toss together and it's, as we call it, hit the ground running. It's, it's a challenge, I love it, you know. Service, please. Get ready for a busy one. Should be fun. All right, order in. Three beef salad, you know, one tomato, one tartar, one escargot. Tomato, Second course, you got quail, lamb. Quail, lamb. Second course, you got filet. Two, three Creole shrimp. Two chicken, one duck. Once, once we start getting busy and 
you know, the tickets are coming in and, and Chef is calling it out, it pretty much turns into, you know, you're dancing at some point. Four and first four Creole shrimp mussels. Mussel hard. I'm still looking for Creole shrimp mussels. Mussels here, Chef. All right, three more Creole shrimp coming at me. Four, copy. Two, two chicken, one duck, yeah? Two chicken, one duck, yeah. Two ducks on five, seven, one. All right, service, please. First, you have to love it. I mean, you have to be completely passionate about cooking and you know, the restaurant industry, because it's not easy. I mean, we work in, you know, six to seven days a week sometimes, 15 hours a day, you know, so a lot of us have families and, you know, kids and fiancés and wives and girlfriends, but we're here with each other the most. So you have a lot of sacrifices, you know, and you have to have you know, a lot of support from your family because you're, you're not there a lot of the time. Tomato salad one, scallops three and four. On 115. Water in. Come on. Roger. Roger. Here we go. Got fire on pad thai. Filet medium. That's three fillets fired all day. One medium. Pad thai brought to you. Water in. Two scallops, one beef. Second course. Two mahi, one scallop, one sweet bread. Two mahi scallops. Sweet bread, sir. Yep. On number three, you got two fillets. <laughs> so we're here at the club at Naples Bay Resort. We have an event going on today for the members here. We're collaborating with Naples Bay Resort, the club, and Mayor Days. So today is just, uh, you know, just pretty much a big demo. We're just gonna have fun and, you know, play around, do some liquid nitrogen ice cream. We got some salt crusted fish. Um, so I think it'll be nice for the members to see something different, and you know, for us to show off our talent and skill for the for the members. So we started at 8 a.m. We left the restaurant last night at 1 a.m. So. Um, it's, it's all worth it. When it comes down to this and we get out here and we get on our stations and you know see the guests excited about the food, it doesn't matter about the hours. How about this rain? How, how did that affect things? Hey, you know, any kind of banquet event, it, it never, something will throw a wrench in the chain every time. So it's just something you have to get used to. Um, we'll make it happen. You know, we'll move everything inside and hopefully the sun will come out in a little bit and be a little muggy, but we'll be good to roll. Everything out, I'll start putting it away. It's a uh, scallop and snapper ceviche. And it's got actually, it's got fresh wasabi in it too. Take the remaining back. A little tuna tartar. Okay. So, yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of liquid nitrogen, which we're gonna do with the ice cream tonight too, but I'm actually gonna make a granita for the oysters. So we're going to do a, you know, a frozen whip mignonette with red wine vinegar and cilantro and shallots. It's 192 degrees below negative Fahrenheit. And so I'm going to slowly add this liquid while Dave is stirring. And we're going to make a granita. So as you can see, this liquid quickly turns into gas. Sorry, you good. It also depletes oxygen, so you don't want to breathe it in. Crusted red snapper. So it's crusted with kosher salt and egg whites and, and then roasted whole. We're about to crack it open right now so people can start uh, digging in here. Great steak just slowly cook it. Okay. 
Don't go away, there'll be more cooking and food when Back of the House returns after these messages. Alto Live Jazz Kitchen is Southwest Florida's new hotspot for dinner and nightlife. Featuring local and nationally known jazz acts seven nights a week, award-winning cuisine, a full bar, and extensive wine list, Alto is the ultimate destination for great music and food. Come see what everyone is talking about at Alto Live Jazz Kitchen, located in Bayfront, downtown Naples, or go to altonaples.com for a current menu and entertainment schedule. We now return to Back of the House with Charles Meriday. All right, today we're having the uh, Taste of Collier. It's a, a festival, a food festival where restaurants from all over Collier County gather and um, serve you know, some of their best dishes. Um, we're here today serving shrimp and grits, which is our signature dish at Mary Day's. Alto is here in the booth with us, and they're doing the chicken sautés with the Thai peanut sauce. Where'd you learn how to make this? Uh, you know, I went to school in Charleston, and that's kind of where I first started making shrimp and grits. And um, I've kind of evolved it, I guess, uh, into my own kind of into my own spin here with the, the cream, and it made it a little bit different with the Creole spice. So it's a, a little bit different than uh, the normal shrimp and grits. Music and production, of course, McQuaid and Company. McQuaid and Company is why we're all here today, so that they're really a big part of today. So thank them on your way out if you are walking by their office. There okay. you go, Chicago Dip Ready. Oh yeah. All right, hey, honey. Can I gotta put some peppers in it. Then I cut it up for everybody here. Same one. Dip. Dip. Cut it up. All right. Two more clear, chicken and waffles. And it's been a fun day. It's a beautiful day. It's tons of people. I think maybe 5,000 people out here today. This is it, man. This is it. Ray, bring it in. Bring it in! Uh, chicken piccata, we have piccata sauce, and uh, coconut mango with uh, mango chili sauce. Cheers. How's that? Hey! Good to see ya! Next, we're going to take you across the street to our other restaurant. It's called Alto Live Jazz Kitchen, and it is inspired by a restaurant I used to work in my first executive chef job in Philadelphia at a restaurant called Zanzibar Blue. Right now, here we are at uh, Alto Live Jazz Kitchen in the morning, so you can see it's uh, nice and quiet and very peaceful. 
in here. It's one of the few times you'll ever find it like this, actually. Um, like we were saying, the restaurant is modeled after uh, a restaurant called Zanzibar Blue, where I worked in Philadelphia in my first executive chef position. And I really, I really love this place. The concept is live jazz um, every night. And so whenever you're sitting here and you're dining, there's always going to be uh, live music on stage. And it really just creates a, a really beautiful ambiance. And it's really special when it's, uh, when it's hopping. <laughs> We're here in the kitchen at Alto and it's a quiet, peaceful morning. I wanted to bring you into the kitchen just to show you uh, what it's like. This is one of my favorite kitchens of all the restaurants. It is just a beast. I mean, a real battleship kitchen. It's really large and spacious, uh, lots of equipment, really big line. Uh, and you really need it. When this place uh, turns up, boy, let me tell you, it gets just bananas in here. So, service, please. You're going to 201. One, six. What am I going next? Overhead yeah. roast potato. Overhead yeah. rock crisp. Six red meatball. One garlic bread and salt, Mario. Coming, sir. Please. Service, please. Pork shank, half chicken. Can I get one sandwich and pure from you guys? Fish special, half chicken, salmon tempura. I put in one half chicken. Thank you. Hey, these go with your half chicken. All right. You're going to 401. Seat two, soup to shore, seat one, mixed drink. Right. Sir, coming up. Service, please. Service, please. Come on. Chef, do you have a shrimp salad? You got a shrimp for that? Thank you. Service, please. I'll have a medium potato right now, man. I'll have a medium right now, please. Give me that half chicken. Roasted potatoes. Coming up, sir. I'm good. That's the side. Put it in there, right there. Across the street, and uh, we're gonna check out Alto Live Jazz Kitchen. It's our other restaurant located at Bayfront. Yeah, I lost it. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that gonna work? You want me to stop?